Okay. So, so who we are as an organization. So unfortunately, Aldo couldn't be with us here this weekend, uh, but he's definitely been texting away and back and forth and wanting to know what's going on. So still very much active from, from back home as he always is. Uh, so Aldo is, um, he is a myeloma patient himself. And for those of you who don't know him, uh, he was diagnosed in 2002. And at that time, you can imagine, um, Velcade wasn't even around. And it was also at a time where, you know, you get diagnosed and you're told, sorry, you got two years to live. So, I mean, in you, for a disease you've never heard of, no organization, no support group, you can imagine what the freak out was like. Uh, so he, you know, made it sort of his personal mission, one, to get a support group going in Montreal. And then with that, saying, you know what, there's something bigger here. We really got to, we really got to get something national going. We got to get information as much as we can and connect with other folks living with the disease across the country. So with that in mind, um, him and another, another patient, um, John Lemieux founded Myeloma Canada in 2005. So we will be celebrating our 15th anniversary next year. So you met most of us this weekend here, but this is our small but nimble team. Uh, so we're, we're a team of eight people with Marcy, who's back there, who's our newest addition. She just started uh, just over two months ago. So she's, she's new and fresh to our team. And then down here at the bottom, that's our office. We're, um, we're located in Dorval, and that's uh, just near the Montreal uh, airport. So our mission, uh, so we, our mission is to improve the lives of Canadians impacted by myeloma. And we do that through awareness building. We do that through educational efforts such as these, uh, advocacy efforts, which I think we spoke at, you know, we kept, that was kind of a common theme this weekend. We'll talk about that. Uh, the support of clinical research, like we're, uh, Dr. Venner was speaking about with the MCRN and uh, fostering an empowered myeloma community. We're gonna talk a lot about that as well and what that means. Uh, and so I'm going to kind of roll through each one of the pillars. Some of them uh, we've sort of touched on this weekend already, so I might blow through them a little bit, and then we'll get back to it a little later. So our info sessions, these, those are kind of like mini versions of these, of, uh, of the national conference. They're half-day events that we go to communities across the country. Uh, we generally try to um, go to a center where there's not necessarily a support group or there's not a large network there, so really trying to get information from coast to coast. We are hosting eight info sessions this year, um, and each year it changes. We've probably done to date about 60 info sessions uh, from, fr I guess, from inception, uh, including the, these eight that are here. Um, and our next ones will be in, that are coming up are in Sydney, Nova Scotia. We have Yellowknife coming up. Um, we have Charlottetown, and we have Juliet national conference that we have here today. So we do this annually. So this is our 14th annual confer conference for those who are unaware of that. Um, and we, this, this is kind of the, the our go-to meeting for the, this is sort of our flagship event. So thank you so much for coming out, everybody, for this event. I think you, I think you all see the benefit as to why we do this. There's so much information that's shared uh, and, and, and are able to meet and exchange with others uh, from coast to coast. So not necessarily just in our support groups, but much more beyond that. Webinars. Uh, so for those who uh, can't necessarily travel to our meetings or to our national conferences, but still want to get some updates and be part of the discussion, uh, we do host some webinars throughout the year. And if you can't happen to take part uh, as it's being recorded, well, we do, f we do, sorry, we, we record them and then we put them up on our YouTube channel uh, so if you can go back and refer to them as well. So as we mentioned today, or yesterday as well, we are filming these sessions, they go up on our YouTube channel, so it's a really great resource for you if you wanna go back and revisit some information. Uh, if you go to YouTube, you just type in Myeloma Canada, I suggest you click on, when you click on subscribe, and the benefit of doing that is each time we upload something, you'll get a notification that something's new. Uh, we do have, you can, it's all separated by playlists, so we'll have educational ones, we have separated by French and English, we have whiteboard videos, there's all kinds of, uh, there, there's a folder specifically for national conference, so if you want to go back and revisit, you can do that as well. So that's, um, and if, you don't, if you're not familiar with YouTube, you can just go to our website, go to videos, and it'll take you right to our page on there. Our online and print publications, so you may or may not have seen them out at the back here. 
Uh, if you didn't get a copy and would like some moving forward or you lose a copy, you can do one of two things. So one, you can go to our website, go under resources and publications, and you can get a PDF version of them that you can download onto your desktop. Or secondly, you can just call us up and we'll mail you a copy free of charge. It's absolutely a pleasure. So we've got two new info guides planned for, uh, for this year. One's coming out next week. It should be available probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. And that is the High Dose Therapy and Autologous Stem Cell Transplant Info Guide. So that's basically our transplant info guide. And that'll be available in PDF next week in both French and in English, and will be available in print in the following. It probably takes about two weeks or so. So we will make an announcement. We will be sending out an email to our community saying that they are available. So if you do want an order copy, you just email us or call us, and we'll be happy to send that out. And then the next one that we're looking to launch uh, probably over the summer is the Caregiver Handbook. So that's one that we've been working on for quite some time now and had quite a few caregivers uh, from our community review it as well. So we feel it's quite robust. There's lots of great tools and practical advice in there uh, as well. So stay tuned for that. Our videos, uh, so we, we've got lots of different videos and different types of videos that we make available to you. Our newest is, if you follow us on social media, uh, we've been putting out these you wanted to know uh, experts answering your questions, and these are kind of one minute clips where a question is asked and then a physician will come on and, and give that answer. We do them in French and in English and we post them monthly. They stay on social media, but they also go on YouTube. And where these questions actually come from is the national conference. So the questions that you didn't get answered necessarily on those cue cards, we keep those and then we, we're going to host video series, we'll be able to post them and then you can archive them for yourself. We have educational whiteboard videos, so those are really kind of the, those are the ones that look like cartoons where they really spell out different topics. So we have some on uh, treatment options, we have some on uh, you know, stem cell transplant, on understanding clinical trials, and experiencing a relapse. So those are, you know, they, they really take the time to spell out each information, uh, each of the, the topics, and so make it kind of easy and digestible to understand. And then we have our patient journey videos. So those ones are uh, patients who are living with myeloma across the country who share their stories with us. And I think we have a few superstars in this room at the moment. Where's Bob? See there, there's Bob's back there. I think you guys have seen Bob, and I think Elisa's in here somewhere. I saw her this morning, so she's out somewhere. Anyway, so stay tuned for those. We have some coming out uh, that are, will be promoted uh, th uh, again this upcoming week as well. So thank you for taking part in those. I think they're quite valuable for, for those watching. Where's Debbie? Is she here? Oh, hi, Debbie. <laughs> so if you want to stand up and just say hello. Uh, so Debbie is volunteer uh, for Myeloma Canada uh, and has started a new program for us called Navigating the Healthcare System. So Debbie herself is a caregiver. She's also a retired nurse. And her role with this program is to help you navigate the system. So it's not medical advice per se. Well, not per se, no medical advice. But it's, you know, questions on, you know, who to go to if you have a problem, how to navigate through, you know, managing your appointments, who to speak to if you've got, you know, a complaint. How do you ask for a second opinion? How do, you know, these kinds of practical advice when you're sort of new at this and don't really know where to turn. So she's available through her email there. It's debbiebasovitz at gmail.com. You can write her an email, schedule a time, and she'll schedule time to call, uh, to call and set up a phone meeting with you. And she's based out of Montreal. Um, so if you don't have this information, you can, all, again, it's on our website under the resource section, and then the, the program is called Navigating the Healthcare System in case you want to re-reference that. Did I get all that, Debbie, or did you want to add something to that? No? Okay, good. And thank you that she's volunteering her time for, for us for this. Okay, so on to awareness. As we know, how many people in the room here when they were diagnosed have never heard of the disease before? And how many of you, when you've told someone you've had myeloma, they say, oh, I know somebody with skin cancer? <laughs> yeah, so part of our work is so not only to uh, bring awareness to the general public as to what myeloma is, uh, but also to bring awareness to what Myeloma Canada is to you. And we want to make sure that you have all of the tools, all of the information that you need to be able to, to get involved in, in um, managing your disease as well and being, being involved in the journey. 
So we, we do take a lot of um, action for that. So one of the, one of, I guess, our biggest tool that we have for this is our website. And this is like the one-stop shop, everything you need to know about uh, myeloma and the events, uh, about clinical trials, information, um, getting involved, resources, everything you need to know is on that site. And if, there, and if it isn't, let us know. And then we'll, we'll definitely uh, add a piece of information that may or may not already be there. But it, it is pretty comprehensive. I think, anyway. Uh, our newsletter. So we send out a newsletter monthly, and this is our, I guess, our biggest communication that we'll send out ongoingly, which includes our newest research updates. So this is where you'll get whether drugs are funded, uh, you know, new clinical trial updates, uh, announcements for that, drug approval announcements. Uh, we've just recently, as you may or may not have heard about daratumumab in several provinces across the country, so that was some quite big news that we were able to share and, and happy to share. Uh, national events such as this one, regional events, um, fundraisers, access and advocacy news, so any advocacy-related activities or campaigns that, were, that are ongoing, we share those. Uh, but I will say that the, the one article or section of the website, uh, of the newsletter that gets by far, like tenfold, uh, that read the most is the patient journey. Each month we share a story from somebody in our community who's, who's um, willing to share the, their story with us. And uh, I think just by the amount of clicks that we get from that, it's highly, highly beneficial. So if you don't already receive our newsletter, uh, you can go to, again, myeloma.ca and just click on join the community and you'll get our updates from us. You can always, fo always follow us on sh social media as well, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. So some of our awareness programs are not just dedicated to the general public and as well patients and caregivers, but a lot of it is, is revolving around uh, early diagnosis and bringing information to our healthcare professionals. So we get involved with many of the volunteers in this room in family medicine conferences, uh, the nursing conferences as well, oncology nursing conferences. Uh, we also do awareness days at uh, provincial legislatures across the country. Uh, this year we're doing one in Quebec and most, I'm either Alberta or, or I want to say Nova Scotia, but don't quote me on that one, but for sure Quebec. And the idea for that is to bring our issues to them uh, and say, hey, you know what, this drug is really important to me. Uh, it's been waiting, you know, it's, we've had Health Canada approval, how come we can't get it? This is, this is truly life-saving for me, so you need to hear my story. And so we've done that quite successfully, I think, uh, especially with daratumumab recently, that was a kind of a big push that we've done across the country with that one. So and thankfully, it's, you know, the fruits of our labors are, are, um, have come to fruition, and then of course, we're now, we now have access to the drug in Canada. The Multiple Myeloma March is our largest awareness uh, campaign across the country, so this year we are proud to have 29 Multiple Myeloma Marches from coast to coast, so that's our largest, uh, I guess our largest campaign yet. Last year we were at 23, so, th so we're really excited about that. And then of course in media exposure, so you know, traditional media and online as well. In advocacy, and I think a lot of you had questions on this in terms of what we do, how you can get involved. Uh, so what we do is, of course, we want to advocate for access to new drugs so that you get access to innovation as quickly as possible. And I think with all the exciting research that we've heard over the weekend, um, you know, this is going to become more and more important uh, in order to be able to improve and hopefully get to the C word sooner than later. Uh, we also want to shape our healthcare system so it's not necessarily just access to drugs, but the way we can we uh, deliver drugs, the way, you know, the, the kind of tease out those, those provincial issues that, you know, you may have access in one province versus another, or how a drug is administered one province versus another, et cetera, et cetera. We also want to collaborate with other patient groups uh, because often we share a common voice with the same issues. So it's, it's kind of that concept of strength in numbers. So the more we can get behind an issue, the more, you know, the, as Martine says, uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, we want to mobilize our community, so get you involved and, you know, share your voice. And again, it, it, it's, it's a, um, we do this around uh, elections, around specific drug access issues that we will ask you, and I'll, I'll go over that in a moment, but we ask you to kind of get involved and speak to your government representatives and take part in our initiatives. Um, one of the things that I... <laughs> 
is, I guess, for those who have registered for our newsletters, have anybody res ever received a survey from us regarding pertaining to a particular drug, just by show of hands? Okay. If you are on our newsletter and you have never received one of those, you just come and let us know because it's possibly you're not ticked off as patient or caregiver because that doesn't go out to everybody. It really is specific to you. And what we do with these surveys is at a point in time, after a drug is Health Canada approved, uh, it goes through a series of processes before it can become available in the province, or covered by the province. And one of these governing bodies is basically looking at, should we fund this drug? They provide a recommendation to the provinces as to whether they should pick up the drug or not. And in doing that, they kind of have to look at all these factors. So it's not just efficacy, and it's not just price. It's kind of a combination of both, but they also, one of the big pieces in that is they take what you, how you feel about this drug into consideration. So an example would be if you, you know, this drug, it's relatively cheap. It seems like it works. It's got good advocacy. It's showing that it's working potentially the same or better than the drug that's already available. But then they get your information of your input that says, I couldn't get out of bed. I'm puking my brains out. I have a zero quality of life. So then that comes into that, that factor. And conversely, if you've now got this really expensive drug, but, and it's got a great efficacy, and you go, okay, it's really great, but you know, I know it's expensive, but look, I can work full time now. I can spend time with my family. I have almost zero side effects. That also plays in it as well. So your opinion in that is really, really important. So we do encourage you to take part in those. Uh, we do send them out several times a year. So please, please, please do get involved with that. And Martine's the one who pilots those projects. Uh, we also work, like I mentioned earlier, with other like-minded organizations. So the Global Myeloma Action Network, which is a collection of myeloma organizations from across the, across the globe. Um, Connected, which Martine is the chair of, which is its acronym SOUP, Collective Oncology Network for Exchange, Cancer Care Innovation, Treatment Access, and Education. So essentially it's a, um, a collection of patient organizations like ours who get together and advocate on our common issues. So our MAP program, um, we just put one out in Alberta. Did anybody write a letter to their MP? What is it, MPP or MLA in, in Alberta? MLA. MLA. Yes, you did. You guys took part in that? That's great. So what it is, it's a, it's a microsite. So when we do have a campaign active, we'll send it out to the community, the relevant community that should be taking part of this. You would see what the issue is, and we'll describe what the issue is. And then you would go in and fill your name, uh, your address, your postal code. And then all of a sudden, you go enter, and this letter pops up. It's already pre-populated, and it looks like a Microsoft Word. And it's already pre-addressed based on your postal code to your government representative. So you have the opportunity to send a letter either as is, but we do encourage you to add your own personal message to it. And then when you click send, it will send an email as if it came from your own email. And then it, so it gives the person receiving it an opportunity to reply back and start a dialogue with them. So uh, in this particular campaign in Alberta, I think we had over 150 letters that went out in, in a week's time. So that was really great. And thank you so much for everybody who, who got involved in that one. And empowerment. So this is one that's near and dear to me. And this is my, this is my baby. So uh, I, in my role at Myeloma Canada, I work with uh, the support groups from across the country. We are now at a record 37 groups from coast to coast. And I, yep. So we have representation in every single province and several in, 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 I would say, in all the provinces. And I, we have a lot of leaders in the room here. And if I just want to get you to stand up so you, we can kind of point out who you are. Up, 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 up. <laughs> so I'm just going to, wait, wait, stand up for a second. I'm just going to kind of mention who you are real quick. We've got Iris Phillips here from Picton, Ontario. We got, oh, sorry, yep. <laughs> We've got Patrick Tabor, Taylor and Dave McMillan here and Bob McCaw from the Toronto Group here. We've got Ev McDowell from London. Linda Loverock from Vancouver. We've got Norma Lindner back there from the Halton Peel Group. Leslie Weatherby from Coburg. We've got Deet Adams from Calgary. Susan McLean from Kitchener. 
Oh, McLean. Sorry, McLean is from BC. McDowell, sorry. Two Susans. McDowell, sorry. Sorry, we have Mano Veilleur, who kind of saddles between Montreal and Quebec City. And we've got Robin Sully, and I think Jean, is she gone? I guess she's gone. She's gone? Okay, from Ottawa. Uh, we're going to talk in, a, in my next talk later, uh, if anybody was looking to get involved in a support group or help out or get one going in their area that there may not already be one, we're going get, uh, to get to that. We have a support group leader summit each year uh, where we bring all of our support group leaders together, much like this type of conference, uh, where it's an opportunity then for meet, exchange, discuss common practices, issues, uh, and learn from each other. So we have that happening this November. And a new concept that we've started this year was a virtual support group. So we, these are online support groups that are moderated by myself. Uh, they're run through Facebook. Uh, they are a closed group, meaning you have to request access to get in there, and you can only see the content once you have access. And uh, the idea is it's really an opportunity to meet and you know, ask questions, discuss with others who are living with similar challenges. And it's, you know, the, the great part about it is that there's zero geographic barriers. We do keep it Canadian, so it's only Canadian members. But, you, you know, it's really great that you know, we see people from, you know, Newfoundland talking with BC and vice versa. And a lot of people who actually met through our young group, who are uh, members of this group, are actually having a meetup today. So it's kind of fun to see those people who have met online now have the opportunity to, to, to meet each other. So that's been kind of an overnight success. And I think we've, you know, it's been about eight months that we've had these live. And every single day we get new, uh, new members joining these groups. Uh, so, uh, one of the goals in 2018 was to really tailor our information. Uh, each myeloma experience is, is very different and how, you know, whether it's geography of how you're being treated or your, you know, your disease and your life itself is very, very, very different. So how we can tailor information to you and tailor care uh, it has become really important to us. So the first thing we did in this initiative was to personalize or to customize our search menu on our website. So somebody who's you know, maybe newly diagnosed versus had six relapses and everything in between, that information that you're seeking is very, very different. So you would go to the part, you know, on the homepage, that's the homepage, and you just click on I am, and then you would just click on whatever option is suitable to you, and then a new menu would populate, and that basically breaks down to the information that would be relevant at that point in time. Uh, next, we did the clinical trial finder, which we launched last year, which I'll talk about a little later. Just recently launched the myeloma monitor, which we spoke about, and I'll answer some questions a little later. And then also a patient empowerment resource, which we've launched. We've just recently launched probably about a month ago, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. So I'm going to skip the trial finder because we're going to get to it a little later. And I'm also going to skip the monitor right now because we've talked about it yesterday, and I'll answer some questions later. So this resource here, uh, that this is the, the, the newest, uh, the newest, I guess, center that we that we're offering to you. Um, it's first of all, it's called, it's a microsite. So the web, the site for this is mymyeloma.ca. You can find it through our website. If you go on the homepage, you can get to it. But if you just type in that URL, you'll get there. Now, the reason for this and why we've launched this is really to make sure that you have a seat at the table and you're involved in asking the right questions and empowered to help making you the right decision in your own uh, journey. So a couple of things that we've launched brand new to this. So the first one is a decision-making tool and a discussion guide. So the discussion guide is a basically a list of questions to ask whether you're newly diagnosed or relapsed. So there's two, two options there that you would, can print out and bring with you to your appointments. Um, we've included questions in there that you may not necessarily think to ask, but are important, especially when it comes to drug access issues. So for example, you're, you're being prescribed a particular regimen, maybe it's a, tr a new triplet, and you go, okay, well, I, I'm okay with this, but what happens if I take this drug now to access to treatment in the future, and will there be an issue for that? And in some cases there is, in some cases there isn't. But it just kind of opens the conversation and the dialogue to be able to discuss your options and make informed decisions. So that's one you can kind of go at any time, print those out, and it can change over time, and your questions will change over time, but those are just kind of uh, discussion points that may be of interest. The decision-making tool is basically a fancy pros and cons way to walk you through 
uh, you know, some difficult decisions you, you may have to make. So in a scenario where you have now are, are experiencing a relapse and, you know, your doc says, hey, you can go on the standard of care, or guess what, I've got this new great clinical trial for you. Now you've been, you know, you've been presented all the options and now you've got to go home and you've got to make that decision. And so, you know, it's maybe not your own decision, maybe you've got to discuss with your family, you know, and you kind of, and this is just an area where you can just put down your thoughts and think of all the 360 elements that surround this decision and hopefully you can come to a decision that you're comfortable with. So there's two versions of this. There's one that you can kind of walk yourself through online and then it produces a report which you can save to your computer and then you can change it as your, de your decision evolves and then you can print it out or you can print out the PDF and do it by hand. So that's uh, one of the elements, like those are the two at the top. And then the rest of it has, you know, the myeloma monitor be on there, the trial finder, videos, and all kinds of other things as well. Now, does that sound like something that would be useful to you? Yeah. Okay. Good. If you find, it's on the, it's in the banner right now. It's, we've kind of soft launched it because we're looking to add the myeloma monitor as of tomorrow. So we didn't go crazy talking about it much, but it, it is available, it is there. So mymyeloma.ca. The Multiple Myeloma March, as I mentioned, we've got 29 communities from across the country uh, who get involved in this event. And as Dr. Venner was mentioning today, is like the funds that we raised through this were able to help fund research, um, important research and you know database initiatives, as he's mentioned. So we're really thankful for everybody who's taken part in these events uh, and, you know, who, get their teams going and then go to their networks to raise funds for these initiatives. Um, we couldn't obviously couldn't do it without you. So thank you everybody for getting involved in those, in those events. <laughs> and finally research, and I'm not gonna talk at nauseam because I think that's all we heard all weekend was all this research, but I do wanna, did wanna bring up a couple of points. So we did talk about the scientific round table already. Uh, so this is, uh, as Dr. Venner was mentioning, is kind of the go-to meeting in Canada for all of the he interested hematologists to come together to discuss clinical trials, the latest research, um, and sort of what's happening um, from coast to coast. So that happens each September in, uh, in Montreal. Now this is new and exciting. So this is a Myeloma Canada-led initiative uh, where we are, we bring, we're bringing MCRN uh, doctors together and it'll be a first of its kind in Canada uh, to develop evidence-based peer review consensus statements that will be published. And this is the list of doctors that are involved in this, in this uh, consortium. And they're basically get in a room and they're gonna discuss, you know, the first one is actually the diagnosis of myeloma and plasma cell neoplasms. So this, once it's published, it's basically going to standardize the way we diagnose patients from coast to coast, whether you're a hematologist, an oncologist, uh, and whoever else may be diagnosing. So that can be, at this moment, very heterogeneous. So it's just kind of creating that baseline standard. And then moving from there, uh, treatment algorithms and how we treat newly diagnosed patients, transplant or non-transplant eligible as well. So that's a really, really exciting initiative and we're, we're really proud that this is coming to Canada. And this one as well, uh, this, our, we had our first kickoff meeting uh, on Thursday here. We have many people that were involved in this group uh, here on Thursday as part of this project. The idea with the James Linden Alliance Priority Setting Partnership is really to get from you and our community on what, what is your goal? What is your research priority? What do we want to solve most? And putting that down and saying okay, from A to Z, you know, what do we want to see? And it's not just patients, it's not just caregivers. We have um, physicians in this part of this group. We have nurses part of this group. Uh, and so it kind of touches everybody who may be involved in myeloma so that we can put together these priorities. And the idea is, once we have these priorities, now we're able to um, r receive uh, proposals that we can fund based on what you've asked in terms of research. So that's what sort of Dr. Venner was mentioning a little earlier, that we can maybe partner up and say, you know what, we need to raise money for this. Like, you asked for this, we can raise money and Reese for this particular project. So thank you for those who are in the room who have taken part in this. I think this is going to be a really, really exciting initiative in Canada as well. So yeah, it, it, I think it'll really matter to everybody as well. So I think I'm going to 
skip that one and there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the clinical trial finder. We spoke about it briefly yesterday, and I'm gonna show you how to get, get to it one and how it works. The, Not that one. No. Yeah. And then we're, what, once I'm done showing you that, and it really takes just a couple of minutes, I'm gonna answer the questions that you have on the myeloma monitor and the trial finder at the same time. So uh, to get to the clinical trial finder, we're gonna go to the, homepage of Myeloma Canada, myeloma.ca, that's our homepage of our website. Uh, the, our menu is down, like it's kind of collapsed a bit, it looks like what a cell phone would look like at the moment, but normally we have up at the top, there's a, a menu that, you will, that will show up. Oh. You wanna go to, oops, clinical trials would be the, the header of that section. And then you want to go to find clinical trials. It's as easy as that. Is it loading? Oh, it's loading. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So th now we're on the we're on the we're on the trial finder page. So just to give you an idea of what this is, the largest database of clinical trials in the world gets housed on a, on a website called clinicaltrials.gov. Gov, and that hosts that has hundreds of thousands of trials worldwide that gets populated onto this website, and it's basically kind of a, a search engine where you can navigate really any um, any disease in any trial. Trying to navigate your way through that sometimes can be reading like 100 page of hieroglyphs. So what we've tried to do is kind of narrow down the search and make it digestible and easy to use. And what we've done is narrow it down to myeloma only and Canada only. So now from hundreds of thousands of clinical trials, we're now down to 30 or so. So it really makes it much more digestible and easy to use. Normally, uh, when you're looking at a computer screen, you're gonna have a panel on the right-hand side that's going to give you filter options that you can kind of cycle through and, and you kind of put in your postal code and see what's happening in your province or in your area. If you're on a tablet or a phone, the menu would look exactly like what this screen looks like. So the, oops, Gabe, how do I go down? Oh. So the filter section is actually at the bottom of this list. So you're gonna have to, I mean, that's kind of pain in the butt, but it is what it is right now. There you go. So this is your filtering system where you can say, okay, I wanna take these 30 trials and narrow it down to what would be relevant to me in Toronto, for example. So could somebody give me a Toronto postal code if you have one? M5J. M5J. One and one. one, and one. Okay. So now I want to see any clinical trial that is within, let's say, 250 kilometers of this postal code that you're willing to travel. M5J1N1? Sorry? M5J1N1, that's Toronto? Oh, 1M1. Sorry. I don't know the postal code. I would need to know the postal code of that. Oh my God, it's so weird to do this on the screen, okay. Okay, I'm gonna put one from where I am, where I live, because then I know that one. <laughs> okay, so H9, there we go. There we go. So I, that's, a, that's a Montreal postal code, and I put 250 kilometers. And these are the amount of clinical trials that are now available to me within 250 kilometers of my postal code. Okay, so it, it will narrow down the search. And what you'll see for each trial is basically, you know, everything that's in red is the title for that trial. Uh, you'll see what condition it's for, what study phase, as we learned uh, earlier, what's the difference between phase one, phase two, phase three, et cetera, whether it's actually open or not, and then who is the nearest center recruiting. 
if I want more information on this, because sometimes there's inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, and you want to know, okay, I'm not sure if I really fit the bill on this, you just got to click this arrow outward here, and it's just going to expand the information on everything that's there. So then you can kind of read through that, and you can either see if this might be of interest to you, or maybe you can actually even exclude yourself just basically knowing what's, what's already happening. You can then print this if you find that this is okay, this, is a, this might look like a really interesting one, print it and bring it out to your hematologist with you. Um, if I go back. Sorry, the internet's a little slow, okay. Uh, you can also, once you've put in, you know, and you've got like 10 clinical trials that are available in the area, you can also print that list. So you don't necessarily have to print one clinical trial at a time, you can print the whole thing. And do you have any questions on that, on the search tool? Yes. No, no, this is really, what it, we actually don't populate any of this. It just takes what's on clinicaltrials.gov and filters down the information to make it easy to find. So whatever gets posted there is what gets posted on the website. Yes. I'll repeat the question. The, the question was, does this, does this search uh, tool publish any results? And no, the only way you would actually get published results is through journals, uh, medical journals and that kind of thing. And that's where doctors actually kind of get their information on what's happening. Any other questions on this? We're good? Now, questions on the myeloma monitor. Did anybody have questions for that? I, th I think I could pull it up somehow. Oh, the mouse, there's no, uh, but it's not popping up on the keyboard. Oh, I get it, okay. Yep. Well, you would have everything that would sort of, f okay, so his question was, why would, when in the search tool, why would you limit it down to myeloma when you can have plasma cell cancer? Because they're not always defined that way in, in a clinical trial. And what, it, what this does is it searches for keywords that has the word myeloma in it in order to be able to filter it down. You want to answer that question, Gabe? And the combination of plasma cell cancer. You want to get that one, Gabe? So you, you can write whatever keywords you want inside the keyword box. It'll, it'll bring up whatever you're interested in. So if you're interested in, uh, you know, daratumumab, for example, you just write daratumumab. Oh, I should have mentioned that, sorry. In the fil so in the filter options, I just kind of showed you through the postal codes, but there's other options in there that you can choose the, the, the phase you want. You can choose by writing, you know, I want daratumumab, for example, and uh, everything that would be related to that would populate. But the list, I, I'm sorry, I thought the question was, in general, how, what pops up is anything that's related to myeloma specifically. So anything that will catch that keyword. Okay, so I'm just gonna log in here. Okay, so does anybody have any questions with this, or do you, do you need a quick walkthrough, or? Yeah. Um, I, uh, Gabe. Gabe. I'd like to be able to bring uh, information about this uh, new uh, system to my support group, and I'd like to um, be able to offer some reasons for them to uh, find this useful. I know I will find it useful, but I'm wondering if there's backup um, evidence somewhere about how tracking your, your information uh, is helpful in the long term, how it might help your doctor, how it might help um, your, your community at large. We were talking about the database, but there isn't a connection yet, I don't, I don't think, between this monitor and the data, the national database, how, but how, how we as patients can be contributing to the myeloma community and how the use of this tool can help both us individually and the community at large. Okay, so that's a two-part question, and I think you were asking whether this would link to the MCRN database that Dr. Venner was speaking about earlier, and no, they're two completely separate things. Uh, this is not meant to be a research tool, it's meant to be sort of a dear diary. It's personal, for personal use. It's meant for you to store everything related to your myeloma in one spot. 
like you know every time you go to the hospital and you got your blood results and it's like 90,000 pages then it's continuous and the stock keeps stockpiling so it's just kind of a way to keep track of all that it's a way to keep track of you know your your medication it's a way to keep track of your appointments your contact information so rather than having it in all these different places it's just a centralized portal to be able to access that um, the second part of that is so that you can sort of manage over time how you're doing so it's not Yes, it can be the blood results that you may be of interest. A lot of people do keep track in you know, Excel spreadsheets or maybe the older version of the myeloma manager. But there may be something that, you know, in the quality of life, for example, if you, you know, today I was really nauseous and, uh, you know, I, c I couldn't eat lunch and this was Monday. And what happens next Monday, I was nauseous again, I wasn't feeling well. And every Monday you're kind of noticing a pattern that you're, you're nauseous on those days. So why, you know, it's kind of a way for you to bring that to your physician after you can bring that report and say, you know, every Monday at noon something's happening and I'm feeling nauseous and it just kind of opens that discussion. If you also notice something in your blood results that maybe wasn't caught or wasn't maybe discussed, or it's also an opportunity for you to ask questions if you're maybe out of range or going in a direction that you're, you're not happy with. It's also a good way, too, if you've changed medications and now you want to see, okay, what's the difference? What's happening? Is, how is this affecting this? How is my symptom management being affected? And just kind of a way for you to kind of put your thoughts down. Yes. Yes, so to download this, uh, we will actually, it'll be on our website where you'll be able to go to get a link to be able to download it, but it will be available through Android um, and, app and the I Apple App Store as well. So it is a downloadable app. It's not something you can access online. It will live on your device or on your computer, so it's not shareable across the board for privacy. Awesome. Okay, so um, thank you for sitting into this presentation today in terms of volunteer opportunities, getting involved in a support group, and what you can do to help out. So, nope. No, it's not that. Keyboard. Keyboard. Nope. Try. Oh, there we are. Okay, so why do you, why get involved? Why volunteer? So what's your impact? Of course, we can't do it alone. Uh, physicians can't do it alone, and I think all of our collective support uh, is really what's going to help move the needle uh, to get us towards the big C, the, the cure word. And if you think of what your impact has done over time, uh, over the last 15 years, our overall survival has more than doubled, and it's continuously moving in that direction. And I think what was really hopeful this weekend is we kept sort of talking about working towards a cure, and it seems like it's what seemed infinitely far away is now being much, much closer than we originally anticipated. So and that's thanks to people like yourselves who get involved um, to help, again, move that needle forward. So the idea is with your support, our, our, you know, our vision is when patients get diagnosed, they will no longer be told that either, you know, you've, you've got five to 10 or, or an incurable disease, but they're gonna be told, you know what, it's gonna be okay. So, you know, getting involved in volunteer volunteerism not only helps advance the cause, but there is, of course, benefits to ourselves. Uh, helps you connect with others, create relationships, new friends, um, and, 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 of course, open your network as well. It helps counteract, uh, counter, counteract the effects of stress, anxiety, uh, depression as well. It's actually provenly known uh, to stimulate happiness and, uh, and bring you a sense of purpose uh, and fulfillment. So there's lots of opportunities, and what does that mean that volunteerism comes in many different forms, and there's many, many different ways you can contribute. Uh, and there's sort of things you kind of have to ask yourself as to, okay, well, do I want to be part of a team? Is this something I really feel like I want to do on my own? Uh, I want to take charge of something, or I'm not really willing to commit to that, and I just want to help out in a small way? Or do you have a skill that you can maybe bring to the table that might be useful? And you know, what is important to you? You know, I want to be able to help with education or I want to be able to, you know, you've got some really strong um, advocates in the room. And you've got those who are really, really, um, uh, say, passionate about education and those about research. So what is it that you want to get involved with? So first we're gonna start with, if you've got a question, uh, who are you gonna call <laughs> at Myeloma Canada? So uh, with my, uh, so you know, people often ask us. They kind of just call and they're like, I don't really know who I'm supposed to speak speak to about this, and I've, I want to get involved in this, and who's who takes charge of that. So I'm just gonna kind of run through quickly with that. Uh, so Martine's, that's her email there. Uh, that 514 number is our office number. 
So she, uh, she is the person to contact if you want to start your own advocacy project. Uh, you want to get involved in awareness days. You want to share a story. You want to craft a letter to be speaking with your government representatives. You're looking for speakers uh, for maybe your support group meetings. Uh, she's the one who helps uh, disseminate those, those surveys. So if you want to get involved in sort of bringing awareness to those surveys, getting involved in early diagnosis programs, uh, nursing, co nursing conferences, et cetera, and also some drug access issues. Uh, Gabe, if you want to get involved in patient conferences, info sessions, uh, you have some ideas to bring to the table in terms of webinars and videos. Uh, Gabe is also the mastermind behind all of these info guides and uh, handbooks. So if you, you know, have any information to bring to that or ideas that you'd like to bring forward, uh, he's your guy on that. Meeting materials, you need sign-in sheets, you need evaluation forms, you need tech support. Uh, if you have a medical question, he can probably direct you to the right person of who to ask. So his email and his phone number is there. Did I miss anything, Gabe? No? What? Did I miss anything for you there? No? Okay. Uh, for myself, if you have any, tr if you need any troubleshooting advice uh, about managing your group, if we have a support group leader toolkit, uh, so how to navigate through that and then find the information you need. Starting a support group, how to get one started, uh, you, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment of the services that we offer for that. Want to get involved in a fundraiser and you know, you need some ideas, you need some help, you need some support, we would help with that. Uh, the Multiple Myeloma March, which we oversee across the country as well. We have a few leaders in this, in this group uh, at the moment. I need some help with social media. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely reach out to me and I'm happy to help with that. Our summits, any PR communication type communications. Event volunteers, you're doing your own event, you need people to help out, you can definitely reach out to us as well and any awareness campaigns. I left my cell phone number there as well, uh, so if you ever wanna call me, text me, email me, you can do that. Shanika's our heartbeat at the organization, so if you have any questions, don't know where to go, she's the one who picks up the phone. Uh, so she can actually help, you know, kind of point you in the right direction of who you need to speak to, uh, but she also does help plan any of the hotel, the travel, the, you need to order any education material, you need to order business cards, shipping, receiving, invoicing, all of those logistics she looks after. <coughs> so here's how to reach us. Here's our address, our phone number, our email, and our website. If you don't already have that information, just myeloma.ca and contact us. That exact information will be there. We're also quite social on social media. So we've got two Facebook pages, French and English, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Flickr. Just type in Myeloma Canada in any of those uh, social media platforms and you'll find us. So here's some ways to get involved. There are just, just a few ideas that I'm going to talk about today and what we can do to help with you on that. And then if you have any other ideas, again, I'm here all day, folks. We can talk about this as much as you like. So the first one is uh, starting a support group or volunteering with an existing one. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got 37 groups from across the country. Um, so you may have one in your area that say, hey, I'd like to help and get involved with those ones. Or, you know, that one's a little far away and I don't think we have one in our area and I think I'd like to get something going. If you don't want to get involved in those, you just want to participate in the virtual support groups, that's totally fine as well, or be part of both. And the way you would do that, you can go either to our website under find support and then you would bring you to the virtual support groups. There's three options. Or if you just go to Facebook and type in one of these, uh, you'll get access to us as well. So what services do we offer and how can we help your groups? So first we give you a website. Uh, so that's what our homepage looks like and that highlighted red bit is where we have all the support group information. So find support up at the top. And then we would put in your group's information there that basically we're going to take what you want said about your group there, your mission, your values, and we'll put that up for you. And we'll, we'll update it as much as you need. We also put you on the map. So those can, uh, if they want to navigate through searching their province through this interactive map, they can do so that way. And it would populate like that and it would bring you to the website. And then, oops, and then the website, uh, once you're in there, there's a calendar, you could put in about us, contact information, anything you need to update your group. Um, we're happy to do that for you. Or we can show you how to do it yourself if you'd like to have that, that access, if you're tech savvy enough. Website updates for dummies. So like, like as I mentioned, you can go in and do it yourself and we, we're happy to help you to show you how to get into the website and make those changes yourself. We will offer you your own myeloma.ca email. So example, Montreal support at myeloma.ca. Uh, one, one, it keeps it professional. Two, it also helps with uh, sustainability and um, 
succession planning. So example, you decide you no longer want to be a support group, uh, a support group leader, and you kind of want to pass the reins off. You're not passing off your personal email to anybody. It's kind of a group email that you can just shift off to somebody else. Or if you decide to go on vacation, you have a co-leader, then you have a couple people accessing that email at once. Uh, and it's free. We'll offer that service for you. So if you need to set one up, you can either send me an email and I'll contact Olivier, but Olivier is our guy. He's our director of operations at Myeloma Canada and he looks after these things for us. We'll also send out news be on your behalf. Uh, so we will go, um, if, you've got, if you've got a conference, you've got an info session meeting, we will happily take your information and send it out uh, to our database of that particular region. We got business cards for you with all your information that you need get those set up for you. We'll also gladly help out with posters, with pamphlets, with graphics, any information that you want to get out that you want to distribute to hospitals or in clinics or wellness centers, et cetera, et cetera. We can help you with social media. If you need to help setting up a page, you don't know how to do that, you want to start a group. Again, um, I, I run the social media for Myeloma Canada, so that's you no know, that's no skin off my back to help you get involved in that. And then group meeting support. We help with speaker lists. We can help with meeting agendas, letters, uh, brochure order forms. You want to get some brochures for your groups. You want to ask us to come and you know talk, or we can do a webinar, or we can Skype into your group. We can, or if we're in the area for whatever reason, we're happy to help. And then the support group leader toolkit, uh, which would help you get your group off the ground. And use the network, use each other. Um, we are happy to connect you with other leaders if they've got some great ideas or if you're experiencing some struggles that we know other groups have dealt with that we can connect you together. And our summit's coming up uh, for the leaders in Quebec City on November 1st to 3rd this year. We offer your group insurance. Uh, so that you don't, you know, most venues will ask for an insurance certificate. So being as part of the network, uh, we're more than happy to offer that to you. So volunteering for March or starting a new one, um, as I mentioned, uh, these are actually quite simple to start. Uh, we have the almost one in almost every province at, this, at the moment. Uh, they're relatively simple to do. Uh, we pretty much do a lot of the logistics at Myeloma Canada. We get you set up with uh, a toolkit uh, to get going, all the collateral you need, set up the website, set up, help with the insurance, the contracts, the costs, everything. And then your role as a leader would be really to help uh, manage the volunteers, uh, the day of the event, help handle sort of the logistics of the day and how and the flow of the event, and of course help promote the event. So it's really a partnership between us and you guys, and we're we're happy to help as much as we can and make it as simple as we possibly can. So if you do ha want information on this, please feel free to come ask me uh, after this event, and I'm happy to spend some time with you on that. Or you can just email me. Or yeah. if you'd like to start your own fundraiser, uh, again, happy to help with any any ideas that you have. We have a couple people in the room, like, I don't know if you guys saw Diane's little uh, clasps up at the front over there, but, you know, kind of getting involved in, you know, her little tiny fundraiser up there, I think actually raised a couple hundred dollars for over, over the weekend. So thank you for those who purchased those little necklace clasps. Those are great. Uh, from anything from, you know, backyard barbecue, we had, I think, is Alan in the room at the moment? Alan's is not here. Okay, so he had a sh head shaving initiative before his transplant. So any idea that you can any crazy idea that you can come up with, you know, no idea is a bad one. So um, here's some of the things we can do for you. If you have an event, we could create a website for you. If you have like a per like ticket purchase type event or if it's donate page or register for an event, we can make those for you. Golf tournaments, casino nights, ball hockey tournament, uh, donation page as a tribute page, 50th wedding anniversary, they were accepting donations in lieu of gifts. Graphics and posters, you know, and any help you need with that, Facebook or posters to get out. Expenses, uh, you come across any expenses that, you know, we, of course we never want you to be out of pocket for any of these things. Uh, and we're happy to pay for it, except just be sure before you spend us out of house and home. <laughs> Make sure we won't go bankrupt. Uh, getting involved in advocacy. Uh, so. As I mentioned, uh, Martine's our resident expert. So if you need to speak to somebody about getting involved uh, and you know ideas on what to do and where to go, uh, Martine is you know this is her passion in life is 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 this. So she can really help you craft your message if you want to plan an advocacy event. Um, she will more be more than willing to get involved. 
tips, uh, how to craft your letters, who to send it to. Um, if you need brochures, letters, letterheads, uh, we can send those. Uh, if you want to do something as simple as making sure your hospital library is stocked with information, uh, that is useful beyond words. And we don't always have our eyes on the ground to see whether you know we don't have enough blood books on the shelf or not. So even if just walking by and making sure that it's there is 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 a big big help. So you can you know just phone us up and say hey send some over to Princess Margaret they don't have any left. Absolutely we'll get that going the very same day. And then you can you know donate a product or service. We got lots of raffles. We got you know silent auction events. We got you know things that we may need at Myeloma Canada that would might be useful to us. So here's some ideas. You're a photographer. You you know you're a printer. You are you a DJ? Uh, maybe you own a food or beverage company, uh, an event space. Uh, any th any little bit helps, of course. Volunteer at Myeloma Canada head office. You know, especially during March season when things get a little out of hand with all of these, um, you know, logistical issues that kind of come to the office. Our office kind of looks like that in September and October. Uh, we're happy to have the extra hands to come and help us out. Uh, so clerical entries, administrative tax, uh, event coordination, uh, like I said, especially around the March. Uh, technical support, you know, if you, if, you got, if you got a tech background, we always need one of those. Uh, as grant requests, et cetera. And that's all, folks. So if you have any questions. I think we'll have time for a couple of questions. Um, and then we can uh, take a, a few seconds for a stand-up stretch break before our next presentation. Uh, I think Jermaine had a uh, Gabe. Mike. Fundraise. How much of that money comes to Myeloma? None. None. Zero. We're our own organization, so uh, so. Canadian Cancer Society, LLS, uh, whoever else, they're their own organization. So we're the only national organization unique to myeloma. Um, so we don't, no, we don't receive any funding from anybody. Okay. I think well, that's a common misconception, I, but anyway. I, 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 I think uh, what I guess Michelle is trying to say is some of the funds that if you were to give to other organizations may go to myeloma, but Myeloma Canada is the only one where all the funds go to myeloma. Uh, uh, please, please use, the, use the mic, please. It's more logical. Myeloma is only the one of the effects of plasma cell cancer. Well, we're trying to use common terminologies as much as we can. Anyone else? Comments? Questions? No? Okay, Good. Michelle. Okay. <coughs> thank you very thank much. You. Th thank you for a great overview presentation. Um, one, more. one more question. One, one more. Oh. I don't have a question, but I just a comment. Oh. Earlier you talked about uh, the Alberta election package you put together, and I just wanted to comment on that, is that I think was, we were quite impressed that you would give us that uh, attention and I used it and mailed out the letter to our uh, my local writing candidates, and lo and behold, I've got one response already. Great. And that's from Sonia Savage, with the UCP party, and of course uh, she won the the, uh, the seat. But she emailed back to me and said that uh, she's very close to us because uh, her mother passed away with myeloma. Oh, okay. So wow. th that was the uh, mm -hmm. message that I want to bring, you know, that we connected with. <laughs> right. Well, th thank you so much for, for getting involved in that, for sure. Yeah, yep. Yep. We're, we're just waiting to see what ministerial position she's going to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you well, hope she's the one you. who gets it, huh? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Deed, from the point of view of a support group leader in, uh, in uh, Calgary. Okay. Um, Michelle, again, thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do with, with Myeloma Canada.